Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Tito. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. How are you? Very good. Yeah. Good yeah, today day. is a lesson for um, stalling. It's already our seventh lesson according to this schedule. Finished. Yeah. How do you find out yourself in these old lessons, especially straight and level, sir? What was that, sir? Straight and level. Yeah, what about you? Have you gone for flying? Um, yeah, I've done it. I've done yeah. it with my instructor. That was good. You find yourself easy to maintain straight and level? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I just um, find it hard to um, yeah. keep it in tree at all time, but otherwise manipulating the aircraft was easy. Yeah, controllable. Yeah, yeah easy, controllable plane. Robert, you Andy? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, easy. Easy. <laughs> Very good. Because I found myself a bit struggle when I first started my straight and level. Yeah? To find the right edge because I was keep looking at the inside of the carpet. Oh, yes. From one side, looking outside, and there was like beautifully sussed out. Right. Okay, today the lesson is stalling is also have a bit of a connection with straight and level flight. Mm -hmm. Because if we can't maintain straight and level aircraft, we say it's not controllable. Because if it's not straight and level and mm -hmm. aircraft cannot maintain, as you intended to, oh, we can say, oh, the aircraft is not controllable. That's something that I was a struggle because I was keep looking inside and I wasn't maintaining right attitude. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right, um, stalling. Let's think about stalling in uh, everyday life. We use the word stalling in just normal day life. Like my manual car stole, like my life is stolen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As we can imagine, stolen is not something we wanted to or we were aiming to. Same as aerodynamics stolen for this lesson. It's the main reason why we learned this stolen lesson is inadvertent. Inadvertent stall means we do not want to get in stall. Right, let's have a look at the aim. So aim for this lesson is to recognize symptoms of the incipient and fully developed stall and learn standard stall recovery technique. So we do not want to put ourselves in the stall situation. That's why I say inadvertent to stall. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's not like I'm good at stalling, like different from all the lesson. I can be good at straight and level, I think good at climbing, I think good at descending and turning, but you can't say I'm really good at stalling because something that we want to we don't want to get into stall. But you can say I'm really good at recognize symptoms of a stall and good at standard stall recovery technique. That's what we're aiming for today's lesson. Right? Okay. Um let's bit of a revise our pre from previous lesson that. Okay. Um, this is a formula as we are you know, approaching to a proper pilot. I um, can't stress more, more in, enough, good enough, more enough to um, this formula. Mm -hmm. We'll have a look at it. Mm -hmm. So, Seb, can you recall the formula of lift? Um, that was the question of lift. Right. CL times uh, alpha of v squared. Alpha of v Square, yeah, both bracket and, and surface area of the wings. 
So can I say S? Yes? That's the formula of the lift. You concur? I concur. Right. And you probably remember this coefficient of lift can be divided by two different mm -hmm. parts. Remember the uh, angle of attack and yeah. curvature. Curvature. That is correct. But this is term aviation terminology. What do you call the curvature of a wing? See it? Um, that's a bit different, I thought. Yeah, so curvature of a wing. Do we have a um, terminology? Was it not ca a camber? That is a camber. Ah, correct. correct. But it, is camber the same as curvature? Curvature of a wing, we call the camber, but technically we can say camber is, as we learned from previous lesson, that's uh, between mean camber line and full line. Oh, okay, line. yeah. That's okay. right, camber. Mm. Yes, yeah, so same thing even. Yeah. <clears throat> And, right, next thing, half row V scale. Whoa, it's quite you know, a bit of something. Yeah, with many letters. It's not P, it's a row. Okay, so we learn how to read this. Half row V square. That indicates? Indicates SV. Yes, correct. So I give you a little hint. Right. Indicate SV. It's the speed mm -hmm. of our aircraft, as you can see. From indicators. That's right. That is what it is. Okay? okay. This is not an imaginary number, that's it, so we can see. So S. Andy, you remember what was S? Uh, surface area. That's correct. The surface area. Yeah. So bigger the surface, higher the airspeed, greater angle of attack, greater camber, also all dedicated to the lift. So, so once one factor increases, the total lift will be increased. Okay. But today's lesson we will learn by how much is the net. By how much is going to be increased infinite? It is not. By how much is the net. So I'll explain later on today's lesson. Okay. Right, um, let's move on to the forces in straight and level flight. Remember equally brilliant, open and two forces are Lift and right. Yeah, yeah, the, right. So um, first lift equals weight, and the other one was thrust and drag. Yeah, yeah, and drag. That was the forces in straight and level. We'll focus on today lift and weight. Okay, right. Last to recall is this. From this diagram, a straight line connects from very beginning of wing, which is we call leading edge. Mm -hmm. Other side we call this edge trailing edge. Trailing edge. A straight line connects from leading edge to trailing edge. We call this the cord. The cord line. The angular between cord line and relative airflow, we call this angle of attack. Very good. So, two axes. One is what? Relative airflow, I would say RAF. Mm -hmm. The other one was a straight line between leading edge and trailing edge, we call this cord line. So those angle between cold line and relative airflow, as you see Andy says, this is angle of attack. Now from, from today I will say A or A. Good. Right, we recall those streets and excellent. We sufficient enough to carry on next stage, right? Okay. Before we move on, let's talk about what is an aerodynamic stall. Not a stall in a light, not in a stall in a car. Aerodynamic stall can be defined in three different sen three sentences. Let's have a look. Stall is a condition. Is a condition where the angle of attack. We just learned angle of attack. Has gone beyond is a critical angle of attack. Ah, there is angle of attack and critical angle of attack. 
So when they go beyond critical angle of attack, produces insufficient lift to support weight. So the lift equal weight balance is not exist. It's broken now. So lift is insufficient means lift is smaller than weight. That condition we call the aerodynamic stall. Right. Um, and so we can imagine if one force's lift is smaller than weight, what do you think aircraft does it happen? Yeah. At the straighten level, we cannot call that condition straighten level anymore because one forces against each other is broken. So aircraft is in. That's a condition of stall. Stall is not like you know a rupture or like a scary thing. It is those that condition those balances are broken. Good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Right, let's have a look at the learning outcome. Of. Explain aerodynamic associated with a fully developed stall. So, like, what's the magic behind this stall? Let's have a look at this video first. Right, you may or may not see this. It looks like the Nazi shell salmon, you know, flesh. <laughs> it's fine. It's what we call the wind turtle. Oh, yes. So, we blow a big fan. Yes. We use a big fan, blow air in here. And this is our smoke. Yes, yeah, so in the wind tunnel, we blow air and smoke. So you see it. Yeah, that can pass through what? With this aerofoil. Yeah. And we can see how this aerofoil curvature and increased angle of attack changes its flow. Yeah. And just to get see before we um, play video, that smoothly go over and passing through this curvature. We call this a smooth airflow line as a lamina. Airflow, mm -hmm. laminar airflow, very clean and smooth airflow. So say laminar airflow is good. Okay, right. I'm gonna draw draw it here after this video. Right. Let's have a look. When gradually increase the angle of the pack. Now air, laminar airflow is breaking down to slightly turbulent airflow. And air starts to separate through the end mm -hmm. and have more and more to the leading edge side. Once we reach up to certain angle, now all the airflow, mm -hmm. most of the airflow, to go above the wing and the line airflow is mm -hmm. up. That's what happened to air flows over the wing and under the wing. Let's have a look one more time. Line air flow, separate, increase the angle of attack. The turbulent areas increase as well. And the point that separates from the wing is moving forward, forward. What means to the living edge? It's a very turbulent now, more turbulent now, moving into the leading edge. Ah, that's the part we call it stop. Right. Right, let's have a look at my diagram now. I try my best to draw this. Right. So very beginning of the way, um, angle of attack, the relative air flows go over the wing and smoothly pass through. So we saw that um, laminar airflow, which is present with the purple color, was flow quite nicely almost up to the end. So in the case, in lift production, we can say, no. yeah. So by the time increase angle of attack, and this lamina flows, flow by, but separation is a part that is the wind path. Mm -hmm. So lamina flows now is tough to run here. But bigger, because it's a bigger curvature, the pressure the difference is greater. So now lift is right increase. And as you see, they all separate point, point move to the leading edge. 
also center of pressure is now increased its effect too. At the stove, we saw this relative airflow pass this cover so only this is very little down to the really uh, line of flow is born there. So in the case, lift is produced but reduce the amount. Right, let's go straight down to this graph. Right. So this is about the lift. And now this lift is increased. So you maintain this angle and increase angle of take slightly higher that aircraft wing now reduce this amount of lift. We call this stop. So other side we call one stall. Okay. Right, here's a question that's weird really, really, because you guys understand so well. Let's think about once aircraft stall, how do you unstall the aircraft? By this graph. Reduce the angle of attack. Reduce the angle of attack. That is today's lesson. We just check the um, aiming again. What did it say? Working out the symptoms and. And? Uh, well, it's even probably developed stall then. Yeah, standard stall recovery. Yeah, standard stall recovery is based on this aerodynamic method. Yeah. So, you reduce angle of attack is the way we install the aircraft, the stall recovery technique. Okay. Aerodynamic way, mm -hmm. but manipulation way, we will control carbon, we will have a look at from the number. Standard stall recovery. Mm -hmm. Right, any questions so far? Is this straight clear? I think so. We're very smart. Okay. <laughs> Right, let's move on. <clears throat> so, learning outcome two. Describe factors which will affect spooling speed. Okay, you just say we um a crop stall with the angle of attack. Mm -hmm. Why you suddenly say stall speed? Yeah, you're right. Um, I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this could be. It could be a question. Yeah, it could be a question. <laughs> Why suddenly stall speed? Yeah. 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 I admit it. Yeah. Stall caused by angle of attack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But our training aircraft, Cessna 172, doesn't have an angle of attack indicator in our cockpit. Mm -hmm. But don't be disappointed because we can also see. Yeah, this stall speed can can be um, guessed or thrived by many different ways. However, again, this is caused caused by angle of attack. But yes. in straight and level flight, in a different configuration aircraft, we can um, get the information of stall speed. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Then we have to find out why this is stall speed then. Mm -hmm. Right, stall speed is the slowest speed a plane can fly, maintain level flight. Again, here, when we reach to the point here, angle of attack is max, so the coefficient lift is max, and we're not changing surface. So, indicated air speed will vary with the situation. Yes. Yeah, so um, if that cannot maintain level flight, that's we're reaching to the point stall where at stall speed can be nominated. Mm -hmm. It's not just like um, the idea, but it's, it's, you can also see from your indicate speed. Oh, yes. um, ASI, air speed indicate, uh, air speed indicate. Hmm, have a look at this. VS1 and VS4. Yeah, do they have more than one stall speed? Yes. Stall speed can be varied by aircraft configuration mm -hmm. and power as well. Many factors. That's why that uh, factors affecting, affecting stall speed. Yeah. So um, basically, let's say um, compare up and down, we can see that all the factors pretty much similar. However, one says, 
press fully up, the other one's in. Press fully extended. Mm. So the actual number is a 44 and the other one is a 33. Aha! Those factors could be the factors affecting stall speed. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So let's go back to um, formula a little bit. That wasn't there before. But now we, I put the weight there because as a definition of a stall, lift the insufficient weight so the aircraft cannot maintain level flight. So one of those factors will change and determine our stall speed. Because we increase angle of attack to the max and our CL is max at the point, we do not consider coefficients of lift to determine the stall speed. Right? And surface area also, we, we do not change wind modification to determine the stall speed basically in here. So anything can break this lifting weight equilibrium, we say that affects the stall speed. For example, anything require increase in lift to maintain lift and weight balance that affecting stall speed then obviously first thing could be what weight mm. right because they directly saying mm. so one weight actual weight of aircraft weight and the other one we want to say is apparent weight as we learn from turning moment mm -hmm. more the bank we feel more heavier Remember? Yes. yes. That is what we thought of the apparent way yes. uh, means to us. Actual number figure is that much. Like um, our aircraft stall speed is 44 knots, but angle 60 bank now increased to 62 knots. Mm -hmm. Right. You can now understand it's not just a fixed number. Stall speed can be varied by many factors. Right. Okay, let's have a look. First, um, I say weight. <coughs> These are factors, okay? And apparent weight. There was a factor, okay? Next thing, I want to have a look at the power. Increased power in a straight and level flight as you experience aircraft. What happened to the aircraft when you increase power, Andy? No speeches up. No speeches up. And yours to the left. Yours to the left. Obviously, there is a bit of difference applying you no know, power. <laughs> yeah? Hey, John, hey, Pete, okay. Okay. Good. Have a seat there in the king, king seat there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Please sit. Yeah. Right. So what actually happened to our aircraft, the force factor, let's have a look. Once we increase power, thrust will increase. Mm -hmm. When thrust increase, let's think about this effect. That is not straight line, it's slanted line. So once increase is thrust, that increase also vertical component of thrust. Vertical component of thrust. Does it help our lift produce? Directly, yes, because they also work in a vertical way too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. So that does help our lift production. So that does affect our stall speed. Mm -hmm. Is it correct? It helps. Yes. No. Definitely. So um I can write down here. But increased power can give us a little bit of different funny factors as well. Let's have a look. Once you increase power, slit stream increases, and the inboard of a wing will generate more with lift compared to outboard of wing. Mm -hmm. That causes imbalance of the aircraft. So the outboard wing has less lift, and inboard wing has more lift. Imagine like you like a big truck with like you know, high. High roof, it's like, it's, it's, it's twitching. 
And the torque of the engine propeller combination may cause also wing drop. Oh, so a bit of terminology coming up. Mm -hmm. Torque effect is very simple. As Newton's law of motion number three, there is also always equal and opposite reaction. So propeller spin is by you remember um, which way the propeller spin this way, that way. Clockwise, right? So as a reaction, aircraft now want to go this way. Mm -hmm. So wing could be not balanced. Because of that force, you increase power. So that it gave our aircraft wings not balanced. Mm -hmm. May. Right? We human always overcome difficulty, aren't we? Right? So we develop that thing. Slow streaks. So that they have uh, you know um, disturbed airflow. So you can generate turbulence, so you can decide which side of the wing board section can um, enter the stall first. Mm -hmm. Second one is wing cups. So you may or may not see the Assyrians. They have um, wing cups, which means in and out of the wing, angle of incident, which is um, how to, simple term, how to attach to the fuselage, mm -hmm. you know, um, accordance with longitudinal axis mm -hmm. that we call the angle of incidence. Those two angle of incidence are different by design figure. Mm -hmm. So we enhance the stability in the stall moment. That's my experience. SR twenty two stall was like very grand, and very gentle. Yeah. According to my experience, PA thirty eight the Hi, the Pomahawk is so characteristic was it's not gentle as an SR22. <laughs> That's for sure. That's what's going to relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> I concur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the funny story later on, but yeah, right. <laughs> so, this um, power effect, power stall speed. Now, have a look at this. Um, this is a graph when um, you extend the flag with. With flaps, you retract flap with our flaps, coefficients of the lift graph. As you can see, mm -hmm. once you um, extend flap in the same angle of the pad, it has a greater amount of the coefficients of lift. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. That means that it also affects our stall speed. Mm -hmm. Right? Good? Yeah. Yeah. Simple as, simple as that. By how much? That much. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Mm. Very good. So can I put flaps here too? Sure. Yeah. Flaps. Next thing I want to say is condition of a wing. Mm. Look at that on the eyes. Yeah. Oh, I can yeah. definitely <laughs> concur with that. <laughs> Imagine the um, nice, smooth, our wing shape now that has eyes forming up and down. That change our curvature of uh, airport. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's what that is. It's not a secret, but eyes are heavy. Mm. It's also increasing weight. Mm -hmm. so definitely, I think would affect affect our spawning speed yeah. mm -hmm. and frost as well. Mm -hmm. That will also change the surface condition of a wing mm -hmm. and also weight. But those two are likely happen in the weather mm -hmm. deteriorated. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So we not in Queensland. <laughs> not in Queensland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> not Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> But once you have that, you have definitely think about, yep, yeah, that effect our stall speed. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Third, oh, that was a good picture. <laughs> the third strike. I don't know which bird is it, like a bird shaped man who's bumped into the world. Or a... Yeah, the main it's point of this picture is the distortion chicken. of wing shape yeah. will reduce the lift production. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So yeah. that change lift production affecting. Stall speed. Stall speed. Yeah. That's the my point. Okay. Right. So I um, put this thing. Um, 
say condition of blank. Right? Mm. Condition of blank. Last thing, this could be very uh, could be um, a little tricky. C G. Mm -hmm. Center of gravity. Gravity. Let's have a look at this screen together. Nice, right? No, no, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. So if you can look at this aircraft from CG forward, induced strength increases and that goes afterwards. This arm is getting shorter. The amount of lift is decreases and now tail down force is decreases as well. So obviously. The location of the CEG will dedicate to lift production. Okay. Required to maintain level flight. Mm. Right? Mm. So, can I say. I like that. CEG is also effect our stall speed. Can I? Looks like it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Like if it's affecting lift generation, then yeah. 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 That's. It's the CEG here. Right? Quiz time. <laughs> right. If you understand my um, lecture, you can easily understand. Right. Anything require increase of lift to maintain level or increase in stall speed. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. It's yes. as simple as that. Yes. So when affecting weight and apparent weight increases, what happens to stall speed? It also increases. It increases. Yes. What about power increases? As we see from the picture, increase in power decreases stall speed. That decreases stall speed. Thank you very much, Andy. Right, so flat X10. And decreases the stall speed. Decrease in stall speed, correct. By 10 knots. In that aircraft? 10 or 11. <laughs> <laughs> 11, right. Good. Um, conditionable wing, I'll say um, damage. <laughs> bird strike. <laughs> yeah, damage means like a bird strike yeah. and contaminated. Yeah. Okay. Significant increase. Still speed. Thank you very much. CG is now moving forward mm -hmm. and we say afterward. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's say it goes afterward. Mm -hmm. What it's happened good. to our stall speed? Decreases. Decreases because mm -hmm. that requires the least the downfall. Yeah. Is it correct? Yeah. Very good. Right, so we connect from um, aerodynamic to factors affecting stall speed. So re remember one thing, stall speed can be changed by those factors. It's not a fixed number mm -hmm. because stall caused by angle of attack. Mm -hmm. Right. Directly Connect to our aiming. So then, in approaching stall, what's going to happen, and what can we, um, you know, observe or experience mm -hmm. symptoms? All right. When aircraft, we we conduct this exercise by slow down aircraft, mm -hmm. reducing power, but maintain level flight. Increased angle of attack. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. as you experience from slow flight from your stream level lesson, we will put our aircraft in slow flight condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, by doing that, we increase the angle of attack. Ooh, 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 aircraft is now slow down, we increase back pressures, so nose pitching up high, and aircraft is getting slow, quieter, and effect of control was. Was reduced. Reduced. Reduce. Yeah. So, yeah? yeah. Right? <clears throat> so it's become less effective. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? Less effective. And we increase more and more and up to the point of a critical angle and again increase more that aircraft become stalled. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's go have a look at this 
um, all the symptoms. Before mm -hmm. symptoms, I want to um, show you one thing. This we call this tall warning device. Okay. It's specially designed that which evolve certain angle of attack. This horn will bust. The two different types of this is tall mm -hmm. warning device, but our one is a horn type. So you can see, um, you just have to show you, right? It's a kind of sucking cup. Yeah, yeah. And it, it sounds like a kid's a horn, right? Yeah. Yeah. That is what it is. That activates five or ten knots prior to stall. That's obviously a good sign or symptom that you can recognize. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're we, we approaching stall. Okay. okay, as I say, first thing, symptom of stall. It's a very, very easy. Like, imagine your slow, slow flight. First thing was, Aircraft, airspeed, reduces, aircraft, nose, attitude, pitching up, yeah? yeah, that's what we induce, yeah. and airspeed is reduced associated with controlled effectiveness. Control. Reduce. Reduce. Yeah. You, you imagine you have a little bit of a nose missing eye and yeah. Still warning? Correct. Yeah. Before before we reach it to the point. Still mm -hmm. warning. And May perfect. When I first learned it's a buffet because um, all you can eat restaurants is not it? Yeah. This is um don't go to the buffet before the lesson then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is unstall stage. Now I'm using red pen, it's after the rich point to the stall, what's mm -hmm. gonna happen? So again, it's it's tough from May perfect. Nice yeah. pitch down. Yeah. Associate with this hand? This hand, yeah. And as we learn by power, aircraft is not balanced, then something gonna happen. Unbalanced wing or something. Mm. Yeah. Ah. Those are symptoms we can experience through this process. Like aircraft speed and they know the so main point is any of these symptoms you can recognize in an aircraft in a normal pace of flight, what you need to do? Unstall the aircraft mm -hmm. by reducing angle of attack. Angle of attack, correct. Very good. That's the main purpose of this lesson. So right, um at wing drop. You see, um, this aircraft. Mm. So, caused by unbalanced wing or like unbalanced aircraft, mm -hmm. one wing stole ahead of the other one, mm -hmm. like that. And natural reaction of a human being, we learn the effect of control to make this aircraft roll back to wings level. Which side rotate control column? Left, yes, yeah. right, rotate left, right, aileron will be down, down. Yeah. left, aileron will be up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this aileron down means not so good. <laughs> cold line is now tilted upward, mm -hmm. it's changing camber. Mm -hmm. According to the graph, we will induce a further stop. Oh, then use opposite side then. No. Wing stall means we cannot control this wing, can we? However, we still have these guys left. Uh, yeah? Yeah. So, which one want to use? Left rudder. Right. We use rudder to fix that problem. Okay. okay? But it's really hard to do. If you don't understand this all the background and without exercise, that's why we put this exercise for your safety, understand? Oh, yeah. Good, very good. That's what happened.
Right, so um, let's go move on to the practical terminology, practical method of how we're going to get out of this um, approaching all the situation. Mm -hmm. So as we said, we will induce this situation to practice, right? Mm -hmm. So before we get into it, we will learn to check up method. One is... Hassle check. Hassle check. Interestingly enough, Kiwi say hazel check. <laughs> <laughs> this will check. Right, um, this is quite straightforward. Have a look. High sufficient to recover by 3,000 feet AGL or nominated by your instructor. Mm -hmm. Main reason is we may lose a bit of you know, altitude, so we safely recover mm -hmm. within in the height. Airframe configuration as required. Again, we have a different configuration to exercise this tall. And security, no losing article seatbelts, because the aircraft knows pitch down, maybe wing draw, this unstable status aircraft, any you know, losing optical, you know, object from your behind or here, mm -hmm. and drop down, it may jam between rudder, it could cause us very unfortunate situations to make sure there's nothing losing item there. Right, engine piece and piece, yeah, very important because we still have to recover this aircraft, take it back, mm -hmm. right? It's all good in condition, it's a rich. Carby heat if you require. As you remember, carby heat, under green arc, pull on, mm -hmm. right? Location clear, built up area secure, vehicle approach point. Yeah, always as we you know, exercise, right? Mm -hmm. even, even more, this is for exercise, we vertically up and down, mm -hmm. yeah? And nose high altitude, you can't see much in our vicinity, so it's very important. Right, this is initial entry, and followed by another stall exercise, we have a slightly simple version that we call, oh, sorry, uh, lookout. This was, was 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is called health check. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not religious, but it health check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, High sufficient, 3000 if you uh, is your and engine PCMP needs to copy heat and location is the same. And look out now 190 degree. Um, your instructor will tell you um, maybe it's lots of aircrafts around, maybe let's do the 180 degree turn. Of course, is anything enhance your safety maneuver? Mm -hmm. Do it and go ahead. Right, after that, as I as I explained, we will put our aircraft into slow flight stage to the incipient stall and the fully developed stall by reference point, heading, reference altitude, lookout. Reason being, reference point and heading because we try to maintain aircraft direction with the balance. But you know the air is so high, you can't actually see the front much at the stall. So with Check reference point and heading bug on the, on the top. So, so that confirms that you were still in the same direction. Mm -hmm. and reference the altitude, yeah? Recover from, recover to. And a lookout by lookout time. So, right now, reduce power to idle through 2000 RPM, carburetor heat on through Kai. Slowly increase back pressure to maintain altitude. It's very important because we want to make straight and level condition. And aileron rudder to maintain wings level and aircraft need to be balanced. Yeah. yeah. Do not retrieve aircraft. Yeah. So now um, aircraft to slow down, increase. Back pressure, back pressure, we reach up to the point, our angle of attack is hitting critical mm -hmm. angle of attack. And then cut. Now, stop. Yeah? So, as we um, discussed about before, the way to break stall is reducing angle of attack by releasing back pressure. Mm -hmm. As we induced it, mm -hmm. right? But if you didn't induce it, it should be forward. But I, I want to be really careful with this thing because forward doesn't mean this mm. no. enough to break this gap. Mm. Yeah? Good thing. Yeah. So, first skill is control wheel forward, reduce angle of tech, brake stall. Second, the full power, 
that the rudders prevent the foot of wing drop, but that's all have to be simultaneously. Means, look at me guys, it is this. Not. This is this. Okay? It's like that. I'm not very good at it, but simultaneously. Yeah. So, right, um, Peter, can you um, remind me how to do it? Okay, so stall, um, is stall. full stall. Yeah. So simultaneously uh, release back pressure. Yeah, release back pressure. At full power. Yeah, at full power. And uh, keep the nose ear across straight using rudder only. Yeah. And I want to put this bracket and say simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Here they demonstrate. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And now, because we this use this technique, aircraft is now unstalled. Yeah, unstalled. When unstalled, Wings level because you break stall out of this further, you know, wind drop. Now, as you unstall, you can start to use it on to wings level. Yeah, and climb away. And when you use a flap, just remember this one stage at a time, right? Yeah. It's not all the way up, especially JUA that doesn't have a stage flap retractor. Mm -hmm. You have to um, give you times level one, two, three, stop, one, two, three, stop, and one, two, three, stop. You instruct or demonstrate in a cockpit in a professional way, but that's it. Yeah. But this one. So after the aircraft on stall, yeah? Set, what do we need to do? You, you can check that. Oh yeah, yeah, just uh, roll wings level. Yeah. And uh, climb back to normal position. Right, wings, wings level. And Climb away. Climb away. And Andy, what about flat? Retract? Retract in stages. In stages. Alright, that's a standard for recovery technique. It's not a complicated thing, right? Mm -hmm. But however, same as a wind drops tall, aircraft's now descending. And natural reaction for human beings is like pull back more and then stall. Mm -hmm. So, naturally against our natural behavior. So, that's why we need a practice. That's why we need to understand all the aerodynamics behind. Right? Okay. Um, by doing this exercise, we will induce the situation in low speed and we will put our aircraft into the situation of the stall. That is a threat. That is a threat itself. Because the aircraft will be stalled. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at this. Our threat is a um, slow flying. Because slow flying leads to stall that we want to see, experience all the symptoms. And if you do not recognize those symptoms, then you don't realize you were one step forward to stop. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen? Aircraft will be approaching to the stop. Right, how to manage this? I want to get out of this situation. Through stall exercise, I recognize those symptoms and use standard stall recovery technique. Any of the, any of the symptoms all have. Yeah. So main main purpose of this exercise, any of these things happen, recover. Because we don't want to get stopped. Right. So exercise itself, as we say, um, all the re recovery technique is against our natural reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah? To so use the wrong recovery technique, a wing drop stall can make the further wing drop. So how will you get uh, away from the situation? Practice to use opposite rudder for wing drop stall recovery. Yeah? Not ever. 
Okay, that's how we um, get out of the situation. Right, any question for this lesson? So far? Yeah, I'll give you a bit of question after this. Yeah? Right, um, why would you listen, um, um, taking this um, exercise, let's have a look at the airmanship. Important thing, look out and listen out. Yeah? We're not the only one who use the training area. And handling over, taking over, as you did it from previous exercises, mark who's actually fly the plane. Sounds silly, but that actually happened, right? Mm -hmm. Make it clear. Train separation, as we say, we lose a bit of height, not a built up area for somebody else's house close. Yeah? And hazel and health checks. Yeah? And smooth control in boots for general engine handling. Right, um, next lesson will be circuit. Circuit is kind of an integrated exercise that, you know, um, give, you, give you confidence and give, um, you know, mix with all your flying techniques into one. Mm -hmm. And take up the landing. Really, really fun exercise. Right, if you don't have any questions, I'll... any question you have left, yeah. Yeah. write it down. Yeah. Yeah. Last question there. Right, thanks for listening uh, stalling exercise. Okay, cool. Right. Good job. So I've finished it. Uh, yeah, that's good.